Hi guys and welcome back to a brand new extra roly video. Now, oh my gosh, I'm very, very excited, slightly apprehensive to make this video. Um, but welcome back to the channel. Sorry, I've not been here for a long time. I'm gonna try and get straight into the topic of this, but I'll just a, just a couple of things before we do start. Obviously, I know I've not made an extra roly video for a long time. I do have quite a large life event happening very very soon with like less in less than a month and I've just been taking up so much of my time for the past few months I've just not had time to like update or do anything on this channel once all that's over I'm gonna start trying to make at least weekly videos on this extra channel so like please stay tuned as some of you might know I am a huge huge Eurovision fan. Uh, I have been watching the show religiously since 2004. So I was only 13 when I first started properly watching this. I mean, I'd heard about it before. I remember like seeing glimpses, but 2004 was the first year that I like kind of properly watched it. From like 2009 onwards with things like YouTube and stuff getting so big, that was when I first started to really get like really heavily involved with it when looking at like every song coming out way before the show, watching national selection, seeing what other songs were around. So I've been I've been a, a, a super fan for a very, very long time. I'm definitely part of the Eurovision fandom on the internet. And we're quite intense. I haven't asked so many times over the years if I was like to maybe start reacting to like songs and giving people like my opinion and stuff because I'm quite vocal on like Twitter and Instagram and YouTube comment sections of like songs to the stage where I don't even remember anyone who's been watching me for a while. A little while ago, I did a hate comment video where someone tried this guy made like an entire hate campaign against me because he was so sick of me seeing me like my face in like Eurovision video comments and stuff when I was just like saying nice things to people and for some weird reason it was a counselable offense to be nice to people. It was a lot. This year I really wanted to actually do like proper reactions to each of the songs coming out but because of this live event that's happening you'll find out very soon by the way. I've not had time to actually sit down and review each song and stuff because it just takes way too long. For a slight compromise I thought, you know what? Now that pretty much all the songs have been released and do my top 10 Eurovision songs of the year, there are a couple that still haven't been released yet, but they're not anything I care about. So I'm just going to go from what's going on now. And this is going to be my top 10 Eurovision picks of 2024. Now, this has been a very strong year. It's been a very, very strong year, at least for my music taste. Normally, there's maybe one or two songs I really like, and there's a couple extras. But this year, there's so many. It was actually really difficult to actually make this list. I have struggled a lot. My point system has changed a lot, but I feel like I've got a good song solid grasp now of my top 10. Of course, it might not be your top 10. That's absolutely fine. You don't have to agree with what I'm saying. You can, you're more than welcome to have a different opinion, but remember to be nice. I do feel like the Eurovision fandom has become a little bit aggressive recently. And if people don't like the same songs as they like, they get very, very upset and feel like they're suddenly being like attacked because they have to justify why they like a song. It's perfectly okay for people not to like my picks or your pick. Let's get on to my top 10 picks of Eurovision 2024 and who I'm rooting for. So we're coming in at my number 10. We have Bambi Thug for Ireland with Doomsday Blues. Now, I'm not gonna lie. When I first heard this, I wasn't really taken by it. It took me a little bit of time to get to grasp of this song. Now, I know that's not necessarily a good thing to base your song on because most people watching this were only gonna see it once. So my first opinion was what the opinion I would have had going into voting. I get that it's not always good, <laughs> to kind of rate things on this, but I think this is probably Ireland's best song that they have sent for a long time. Ireland and Eurovision for the past like decade, I would say, haven't really been very good. I I don't know what happened because in in like the, in like Eurovision history, Ireland's one of the powerhouses is one one of the most times ever. I don't know exactly what happened in the zeitgeist of Ireland when it comes to Eurovision, but there's some there was something about the late 2000s where they kind of feel like I feel like they kind of stopped trying as hard, and they've had one or two like good entries, but overall it's been quite a bad a bad storytelling arc story arc. And I think honestly, it was when that sock puppet went to it what 2008 i think it was ireland do the pro like ireland, do the pro. Ireland, do the pro. it was it was absolutely abysmal like that felt offensive and it's not even because they've just been picking the wrong songs i've been watching their national selection for a few years now and honestly the pool of songs they've had to pick from have all been a bit 
eh, like nothing really has been amazing. Doomsday Blues is a definitely an interesting pick for them. And I think it's the most interesting song they've had for a long time. The first thing what I like about the song is it's a bit divisive. And when it comes to genres of music and niches, I always find it very uh, exciting when a niche that isn't necessarily represented gets represented. And we'll talk about that a little bit later with another song. But I think for the slightly heavy, I don't know what you would even necessarily call this genre, but it's it's you know, closer to like more heavier stuff styles of rock music in going in because there's, there's screaming elements of the song as well. So I think there's it, it's quite cool when like a niche that doesn't necessarily get represented gets shown. I love the imagery. I love all the witchy, all the kind of like runes and all the kind of, you know, the, the witchy vibe of it and the gothy aesthetic. And I think on the actual Eurovision stage, they have really good potential if they have a bit more money to really bring you into like the world. And I think it can be very they have such good potential with this. What I do find is I did think, I, I think maybe this was just an audio thing on the, on the, on the Ireland stage, but the audio mixing was a bit off. The vocal sounded a bit weird with the backing track. And to be fair, even in like the studio cut of the, the studio cut of the song, the vocals are quite low and you can't really understand what she's saying very easily. I think the vocals and that needed to be turned up a tiny bit, but that stuff can get worked out on the Eurovision stage. My biggest concern when it comes to this song is I just feel like, unfortunately, because of things like the commercialization of Halloween, I mean, I love Halloween and like some sort of like costumey, effect that has happened when it comes to horror movie stuff or you know goth culture or any of this kind of stuff unfortunately because of all of this sometimes this kind of look and aesthetic can look a little bit cheap and costumey just because of how the world has kind of embraced that side of things and using it as like dress up so unfortunately i do feel like it's a fine line that you tread with trying to make this aesthetic look expensive. And at the moment, I do feel like with what they presented at the Ireland selection is I feel like it was a little bit blue banana. So I just think they need to find a way to elevate it where it looks a little bit more expensive with the backing. If they have a bit more finance when they go into it, this can all be worked out. I think it has a good shot to go into the final. I think it's probably one of the, again, I think it, it, it has a good shot, especially in a in a series of high energy, up-tempo, pop Eurodance kind of songs this year. It stands out a lot more. So I think it has a good chance, but I don't know. I'm, be, I'm trying to be, again, I'm trying to be a little bit objective and I just worry that people might look at this and go, oh, it's a little, bit just a bit cheap i don't know it's hard to tell so coming in at number nine my dupe goes to sweden with unforgettable the twins marcus the maintainers girls this one i actually was a little bit uh there, there's been there's been like a puzzle going on in my head as to why i like this as much as i do also then trying to battle objectively looking at this when it comes to televote people and juries now sweden of course over the last 10 years they had not the best run in the 2000s with position mid to late 2000s they kind of was starting to the trajectory was kind of going low and then when it comes to the 2010s they kind of like upped their game and suddenly just started pumping out all these like bangers now sweden have a criticism towards them that their 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 songs are a little bit too sterile they're a little bit too perfect there's not really much soul or vulnerability to it sometimes i agree with this sometimes i don't like last year tattoo tattoo was like my most played song of 2023 i love lorene i think she was incredible form of the the, the whole show, everything was incredible. So I don't always agree with that sort of sentiment towards Sweden, but I do think that this song for me has that element of perfection to an almost unwelcoming kind of degree. I think they, you know, they sound great. I do prefer their song from last year. If you didn't, if you don't watch Melody Festival, which is the Sweden selection process, their song last year, Air, Percy to me was a much better, but of course they were never going to beat Lorene. As soon as Lorene released the little snippet from Mel they, you know, the Melody Festival and like snippet they release, it was over for everyone else. It was like, okay, everyone can go home. She's clearly winning this. Knowing that they were coming back this year, I was like, I was quite excited, but I still really like the song. So I don't 
know if it's been like officially sampled, but as someone who is a huge lover of like the Y2K era, especially music, I was a big, oh, well, I, I was, I am a big Faithless fan. Um, and so things like Insomnia, We Come One, God as a DJ, like this uh, master, weapon of mass destruction. He's got so many good songs. And instantly when I heard the song, I was like, Selva May, they've used the sample. And I don't know if it's licensed or I, I don't know what the copyright law is when it comes to licensing samples and licensing melodies. I don't know what the rule is, but this song clearly has either taking a sample or taking inspiration from Selva May. Just listen to that melody and then clearly there's been something there. And I don't know if my nostalgia brain has listened to that and gone, oh, because as soon as I heard it, I was like, I know this, I know this, I know this from somewhere. And as this is my genre of music I absolutely love, especially like Faithless Old stuff, I was like, that's it, that's it, that's it. So I don't know if maybe I'm liking it just because of that sample and it's hitting like a nostalgia in my mind and which is making me like, like it more. But I think this is good. They sound great. The staging is very impressive. The, as someone who, as you probably can tell by my, <laughs> my background, I love maximalism. I love intense lights. I love flashing. I love all of this kind of stuff. So seeing the staging, it was very impressive. However, I do think that the staging can be a little bit detached from the audience and it can make it feel like they're not actually there. And the audience and people at home it's natural to want to feel like you're involved with something. And if the staging is a little bit too detached from the audience, it will put people off, potentially tweak it. So we get slightly more audience shots or we can see them in the stage just so it doesn't feel like they're so detached. There's a lot of people talking about like, oh, it feels like you're watching a music video. And like, that's not necessarily a good thing because you don't want them to feel distant. I think it can put people off. So I don't know. I like the song, I think it's good, but of course there are a few things riding against Sweden this year. They just won, of course people, like it normally host countries who just win don't tend to do well, at least in my knowledge, I can't remember the last time they did also really, really well as well. Obviously the controversy is like with the jury public split last year of Lorene and Carrier. I think that might play into some voting this year. I think there are some things riding against them. I think this will still do really well with the juries. This is Sweden love the juries, they can do really well with the juries, but public vote, I don't know if people will vote for this. Coming in at number seven, my Twapwa go to Spain and Zora. Zora, Zora, I'm probably mispronouncing it. I, to be honest, I don't really have a lot to say about this. I think it's just a bit of fun. It's camp, it's cheesy. Spain this year clearly aren't trying to win the competition. There's no, there's no, there's no, you know, power here to win the competition, I don't think. But it's not done in like an Ireland did back in 2008 with a sock puppet. It's not that. This is like, we don't want to win, but we're still sending something that actually has some kind of like substance to it. It's a good song. It's got a catchy hook line with people chanting in the Spanish selection. Like the, the audience was going absolutely wild. Like they clearly loved this. And I think the Eurovision fandom will love this. The audience members in Eurovision will 100% be chanting the Zora section of the song. Again, people love to feel like they're involved in something. People love to feel like they can get involved. Hence why things like Soldi, uh, with the double clap, everyone in the audience was going clap, clap in the, in the chorus. You know, cha-cha-cha with people chanting cha-cha-cha as well. Like people love being involved with stuff. So this will go down well. Like in the Eurovision fandom, it will go down wonderful. People will love it. It's a lot of fun. But of course, it's not the most vocally challenging song. It's a little bit one note. You know, it's not that it's not, it hasn't got peaks and valleys really, but do we care? No, this is a fun song. She's having a wonderful time. You can see that she's really enjoying herself on stage. Like I love this. It's camp. It's fun. Yeah, I don't really have loads to say about it to be honest. I just like the vibe and yeah. So coming in at number six, my quatre points. I don't know if this is cheating to have <laughs> my own country on this list, but I don't normally like the UK songs. The UK, obviously, anyone who's not lived under a rock, you know that the UK um, has done, well, 
very poorly over the past decade or so. I think Come Back was the last time we did anything good. Come back if you love me. How do I survive without you? I think that was the last time we actually did somewhat good. Oh no, Jade Ewan, 2009. Jade Ewan, I think she was like seventh place. I think we were top 10 at least. We've had a really, really terrible trajectory. But of course in 2022, when Sam Ryder went in for Spaceman, the start of a new era. Now, of course, May Miller didn't do very well in Eurovision, but I think the song actually was good. I, I still enjoyed May Miller's song, but this song Dizzy by Ollie Alexander, I really like it. It's very, you know, retro. Again, it's, it's tapping into the nostalgia vibes. There's, there's, there's a big theme at the moment with Eurovision in this year is that it, it, there's a lot of nostalgia and, uh, you know, harking back to the Y2K 90s era of stuff. You know, it's in the zeitgeist at the moment, isn't it, really, with people? I do think, unfortunately, it couldn't really live up to the hype that was surrounded it because they did hype it up a little bit too much. However, I do feel like some people are forgetting that five, six years ago, if this song was put up for us, if, if they came out and released this song for us, representing us like five, six years ago, we would have been elated. It would have been like, oh my God, what are we doing? Like, this is absolutely insane. This is utterly, utterly deranged that the UK have actually put effort it's clear that they've put money behind this again as well. I'm really glad that Sam Ryder has kind of like really amped up the Eurovision sort of umph for people in the UK to actually try. So Ollie Alexander comes out with Dizzy. I really like the song. The last chorus needs to be slightly more impactful. There's a bit of a high note, but I think you should hold it for a bit longer. Of course, a lot of this can be different when he sings it live, although we did get a Vivo live exclusive, exclusive of it, and he basically sung it the exact same. So I'm hoping there's a little bit more dynamics towards the end. I think with the chorus coming in quite fast and then coming in again relatively quickly, it can be a tiny bit monotonous and, you know, he sings it four times. So I, I, I think there needs to be a little bit more diversity towards the end of the song. But I really like the the bridge where he's, where he's talking in it. Um, my friends Novimpia were like, oh, it's like a Adam Rickett with I Breathe Again. It is very Adam Rickett, I Breathe Again. There's also that Spice Girl song. Um, was that, I'd rather be hated than pitied. Uh, I can't remember what song it is now. I think, is it Naked? There's a song where they have like a talking part in it. Victoria Beckham has an Out of Your Mind song that has a t like talking part of it. It's very, it's, again, it's very Y2K era of like talky bits and music. I absolutely love it. But yeah, just the, the, bri the, the bridge leading into the chorus. I think the chorus, last chorus, just needs a little bit more sort of like vocal fun with it to make it feel a bit more powerful and not just repeating the chorus again. But I like it. I think he's a good singer. Uh, I was never really a fan of years and years music, to be honest, but I do like this. And honestly, any other year, this probably would perform a lot better. But this year is a very strong year. And unfortunately, I do feel like there's a potential for it to be lost within the mix of up-tempo songs and, you know, male-driven up-tempo songs. So I think it could get a bit lost, but I don't think we're heading for, like, a really low point system. I think we could happily be on the left side of the board with this song. And I'd be happy about that, to be honest. One thing I do think that comes into play with a lot of this stuff is how the representative also feels about Eurovision. And Ollie Alexander is a super fan of Eurovision. He loves the show. He loves, like, I feel like he'll actually be someone going around, doing all the interviews, doing all the press things, actually getting involved where some of the past contestants haven't done this. And of course, people remember that. Public relations when it comes to Eurovision is a big thing. Going around places, getting your face out there, getting your name out there, getting your song out there, getting your personality out there is really important to get people to like you and it will sway people to vote for you. So I think it's important and 100% Ollie Alexander is 100% going to be doing all of this. So I think it also that, that, that adds to the potential point giving. Staging wise for this, as long as we carry on with the, the, the current, I don't know who did the, you know, Sam Ryder and Mae Miller. I think the only problem with Mae Miller is she felt a little bit too far away from the audience members. So I think with Ollie, if we can have slight more close ups and get him to be a little bit more involved, um, I think we'll do well. I think just the staging needs to be exciting and fun. I don't want it to be too much like the music video where like you're again, inside a house and you're enclosed and you're not really, you need, I, I just want to be able to feel like you're 
you're part of the show. So coming in at number six, my cinq point, that goes to Lithuania and Look Telk. I, again, this is one of the ones that I don't really have loads and loads to say about. I just like the song. I think it's very current. It's very, you know, it's very now. It sounds, it sounds very now. I like the hard bass of it. It actually has a slightly harder kick drum. That's the kind, it's the kind of song that like, if you're in a club, you'll be able to feel the bass. If I was to pick a negative thing about it, I think obviously it's a very one note. Again, it's not the most challenging vocally. There's not sort of like one powerful moment. Uh, not, I mean, not all songs have to have that, uh, but I think for like jury and like trying to get points from them, sometimes having the vocal range is a good way to like get, you know, get jury votes. I don't know how well this will do with the jury. I think with it being quite current, any younger jury members would probably be like, yeah, Okay, we'll vote for this. I'm not sure. I do think it has a good chance of doing quite well in the competition. Dialistic wise, I think it looks cool. I have all the dark LED lighting, the the slight the slight mysterious vibe of it. I don't like this, I, his his outfit, I think maybe it can be a bit more exciting. It feels a little bit casual, but, and I wasn't too keen on this like metal thing he had on his nose. I was like, I don't really understand what this is. Overall, I think the package is very well done. He sounds good. When it comes to staging with this song, I mean, I don't, I don't know what else you can really do. It's kind of, I, 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 I feel like they've got a good stage presence at the moment. Maybe some light tweaking can happen, but actually like, with this kind of music and this kind of song, I don't know how you can really do like big staging with it. I think it's more about lights and colors rather than trying to add props and shit. I think as long as they stick to what they're doing, maybe just some tweaking here and there, I think they'll be fine. So coming in at number five, my sipoin goes to, <laughs> so I don't know why I'm finding that so funny, but this goes to Croatia and baby lasagna with room tim tagatim. <laughs> I'm sorry, I don't know why I'm laughing at myself. So this was a, this was an instant, this was like an instant love. Sometimes when you hear songs, it might take a few times to really like it or whatever, which again, for Eurovision isn't always the best thing, but this one was like an instant grab. This grabbed my attention. I watched it instantly and was like, oh, this this is something here. Sometimes when you, like, you can hear songs sometimes and go, oh, this is a competitor to win. You, you listen to these songs and go, they're just here to have fun. Or that's how you hear a song and be like, oh, this is actually a good song, but it's not going to win. I like it though. And then the songs like this that just go, this is a potential winner here, sis. So starting off with like the positives of this song. Well, actually there was a whole hoo-ha about this song, which is really embarrassing for Croatia. The, the fact that like the governing board who decided the songs that were going to be selected for the selection process, the fact that they didn't pick this and the only reason this was in the running order was because one of the people they did pick had to pull out. And then the one that didn't get through because they didn't think it was going to be good enough ends up winning the whole show by a landslide. Really embarrassing for the governing board who made, who did all that. I think it was at HRT. Hormone replacement therapy. I'm glad that this actually got the chance to go through and won the whole damn thing. It's a lot of fun. It's high energy, very impactful. It gets your attention right away, especially considering this year is very dance orientated. The fact that this has like a rocky, a more slightly rocky feel to it definitely makes it stand out a bit more. But the energy and the high energy and the impact is still there. Now, of course, it's going to get the comparisons to Karia. Um, I think I've any of the, any of the songs this year, and maybe some of the more sort of like quirky, fun songs. But I think it's actually the closest when it comes to the vibe. And we're gonna you're gonna you're gonna get the comparisons. It's going to happen. Whether you think it's fair or not, it's going to happen. But I think this is different enough that people won't think, oh, they're just copying him. Especially because things like I know it sounds stupid as well because I know what the guy is wearing is like an actual Croatian. Uh, uh, like has a cultural heritage to his outfit. But of course, people watching this won't think of that. They'll just see the guy with the big puffy sleeves and think, oh, they're just trying to copy Kadia. So unfortunately, those things do sometimes work against you. But I, I, I think in this case, I think it's unique enough with the package and the way that it's performed that it's good enough that it won't be too damaging to its chances. I will say I'm not a massive fan of the sort of bridge techno breakdown bit they've got. I don't know much of this guy's music, so maybe this is slightly more common for him to put this kind of stuff in his music. But as someone the first time watching it, looking on not knowing him, I heard the sort of like techno breakdown where it just has like a kick drum and an offbeat. And I'm a bit like, oh, I don't, I, it doesn't, to, personally, I just don't think it brings much to the song. If there was some sort of lyric or some kind of singing there. I feel like it's just kind of put there to elongate the song. I don't feel like it really adds substance to the song because it doesn't really go anywhere. It doesn't do anything. But overall, I think they've got a really good package here. It's going to get people getting involved. People are going to get up. They're going to pay attention. This will 100% qualify to the final. I do not see this not qualifying. I will be gagged, like fully gagged if this doesn't. The stage is open. 
it's it's very visually appealing as well. Lots of fire. I love the cat, like the lighting in the background with the cats doing the dance and stuff. Like there's so much going for this. I really do not see this not getting into the final. It would be a gag, a gag if it doesn't get to the final. But personally, this is my fifth position. Absolutely love it. I think it's still number one in the bookies odds. I I'm pretty sure it's still number one. They just beat out Ukraine recently. Of course, this song also does have a meaning of people leaving Croatia. I don't know the history of Croatia and what, why, why that's happening. So I'm not really going to talk about it too much. Oh God, but sorry, but bur sorry, burping. I don't really want to talk about that stuff too much, to be honest. You have to remember as well, objectively looking at it, if it's not in your native language or, you know, it's the first time listening to songs, a lot of this stuff is lost. You won't understand any of the backstories or meanings. The commentators can give you some kind of like hints to things beforehand and give you like a bit of meaning. But like, really, most people won't understand this. Most people watching this for the first time, which is the majority of the Eurovision audience. I think sometimes online people can get a little bit, but it has a really deep meaning. And people should be like, yes, but in the Eurovision fandom like us, we look into these things. We really like go in depth of this stuff. Most people who watch Eurovision, who make up the majority of Eurovision watchers, won't be doing that and we'll see something especially if it's not in your own language i know obviously croatia is but like songs that aren't in your own language they're never people are not going to understand this so the song itself has to be captivating enough to make people vote for it they're never going to vote for it because of the deep meaning behind a song because most people won't know about it so coming in at number four my set is <laughs> Denmark with sand. Is it Saba or Saber? I'm not sure if it's Saber or Saba, but sand with Denmark. Now, this might be a bit confusing to some people, I don't know. Uh, and there was a whole, there was this whole discussion about this song sounding like a Melody Festival and rechecked. Personally, I find that completely laughable because honestly, this was better than so many songs from Melody Festival in this year. I have been watching Melfest for years and years and years, keeping up to date with it. They've had some really good songs. This year, Melody Festival and the, the caliber was actually a bit low. I was, I wasn't really too taken away by many songs this year. So the idea that you would say Sand is one of those like rejects from this year. I just honestly find it completely untrue. It sounds like something you would hear at Melody Festival in, but it wouldn't be a reject. She sounds so great. Uh, I don't have any qualms or worries about her singing live. I've seen a few performances of her now and she's been wonderful. Uh, I love the fact, obviously this is not really related to the song, but she's also a queer person. So lovely seeing a queer person, especially a black queer person representation. We love to see it. And I really like the song. I really, really like the song. I think the only thing I would say when it comes, if I was to think of like downsides to it, I would say the staging, I love all the lights. It's very intense. It's very like visually sort of like stimulating, but I do think some of the lighting could probably be a little bit tweaked so we don't lose her. There are many sections of the, uh, towards the end of the song where all the lights are like flashing. And because she's wearing just like white from head to toe, she can get a little bit lost in the lights and you kind of lose where she is. There's a few shots where like she's silhouetted and the lights are behind her, which I think looks so good. And I'm like, oh, okay, yes, bitch, keep that. Of course, on the Eurovision stage, they have a lot more options for them. So I'm sure they'll tweak that. Like it's very up and down. This It's not one note. Uh, I, I honestly think this is one of Dan Denmark's best songs for a long time. This was my favorite going into their selection process. So I'm not surprised that she won and I think it will do well at Eurovision. I think it's definitely middle ground. I don't think it will stand out enough that it was like winning, winning, but it, I don't think it's going to do shit. I think it's going to go to the final 100% and I think it'll be a middle ground song. I do think there was a bit of like noise distortion added to her microphone in the selection process, which th th it added like a slight sharpness to the vocal, which I think didn't sound as nice, but I only really picked that up if I was listening to it on headphones. If I'm listening to it through speakers, it didn't sound as much, but through headphones, there was, there was like a high pitched scratchiness ever so slightly added to the vocals, like a, like a dis, like a distortion um, add-on added in. I, I've, I've made songs and things myself, so I, I've, there's like a plug-in that like can distort things. It's for stylistic choices on some things, and it can make it sound really good. Technically, I don't know if this is what they've done, but just listening to it, it's what it sounded like, that there was a slight bit of almost distortion added to it, or it was just peaking too much. I don't know, but there was a scratchiness to it and I didn't like that. So coming in at number three, my Wipwa goes to Finland with Windows 95 Man and No Rules. Now I know this might turn a few heads. This might be like, what the hell is going on? I 
love to the center of my core. I absolutely love Eurodance and again, the Y2K era of things. The whole, I just, I know it's a bit of a parody, but I think there's enough elements here where like, it's not a joke. People are saying it's, a lot of people are saying it's a joke entry. Yeah, there are joke elements to it, but like production wise, the song itself, the vocals, everything, it's all very well produced. It's very well put together. This is a solid song. Yeah, there are some like fun parody joke elements, of course. It's very camp. It's very like the guy pretending to be naked and then he gets the shorts down and then he has the pyrotechnics in the shorts. Like there are many parts of this that have like fun joke elements of it, but the song itself in the package it's not a joke i do think finland are riding on the kind of like fun cha-cha-cha carrier energy 100 percent there, there was a, i mean there was a lot of like controversy when this won because of what it was and a lot of people around the world were talking about how i can't remember what her name was now the the the, the other girl who had the song with the the halo ring around her like there people were saying that she should have won i can't remember what she was called enough off the top of my head my biggest thing is the finnish public voted for Windows 95 man. I'm someone who is of the opinion, you don't have to agree with this, that I don't really understand why there are international juries deciding what a country sends to Eurovision. For me personally, I think the country should be able to decide who represents them. I find it weird that someone in the UK or someone in, you know, Denmark or someone in France can determine what Finland send to Eurovision. In Eurovision, I like the juries. It makes sense because it's all the countries all coming together to vote on each other. It makes sense. But I personally don't really understand why juries tell other countries what they can and can't send. I feel that's a bit strange. And the people of Finland voted for Windows 95, man. Like, and he won. He Again, again, it's a bit like the carrier thing. He did just win by like a little few points. So he won by a huge margin. Clearly, Finland wanted to send them. And I'm all for it. <laughs> I love the Eurodance vibe. I love the, you know, the Y2K 90s era outfits, clothing. I love it. It's fun. The guy sounds great live. Obviously going into falsetto is difficult. There are moments where it's like, oh, it doesn't sound amazing, but I think he sings great. I think it's just a bit of fun and people need to lighten up a bit. The staging is stupid. It's great. The whole denim egg and he comes out of denim egg and he's pretending to be naked and then he gets the shorts of the pyrotechnics. Like, I love all that. I think it's fun. It's silly. Can we stop being so serious all the time and being like, well, this other person should have won because she can sing better. I don't care. You don't get to decide what other countries get to send. Sorry, that's my opinion. Like, you shouldn't have a say on what other countries send. You can like their song. If you love it so much, support them, buy their music. Wonderful. But I'm with the, the firm belief that a country should be able to pick themselves. Because if you want to talk about things like other countries, why the f the UK jury gave their top points to that really weird badly put together boy bands in Ireland. I don't understand. This is one thing that I always find a bit funny about juries and public voting is that juries in other countries have almost have, you know, an incentive themselves to pick a bad song so their country can do better. Will that happen? Probably. That's, that's a potential that that kind of stuff could happen. Is it shitty? Of course, but there's still that incentive there. And the UK giving 12 points, their top points to that boy band that was in the Irish selection process, for me, is the perfect example of like, what the f are you doing? There was weird shit going on there. Shifty, shifty stuff going on there. And I refuse to believe that the UK jury all were like, yeah, we really love this song number. Sorry, I don't, I will never buy that. Conspiracy theory you want. This is why I always have a bit weird thing about juries being able to decide other countries. So we're coming in at number two and my despoir goes to the Netherlands and Europapa. Oh my. Okay, so, right. I, where do I even start with this song? So some people won't understand the relevance of why this is actually quite impactful for people like me and other people who are part of the hardcore and GABA world. Now I have been obsessed with like happy hardcore GABA and hardcore music for what well, ever since I was like a child. I first, I mean, I first started listening to like harder dance music in like the early 2000s where I started listening to like hands up music and a lot more of the um, hard house stuff that was around in the UK at the time. And then I slowly went into like the club land hardcore scene, which was all like UK hardcore and happy hardcore. And then in 2004, 
2004, maybe 2005, I um, discovered the album series in the UK called Bonkers, which again happened a lot of, happened like UK and Happy Hardcore. But there was one DJ called Scott Brown, who at the end of all of his like DJ mixes he would make, a few of the last songs were in like, more like Gabber and Hard, like Hardcore, like Dutch Hardcore. And I didn't really know what this kind of style of music was yet. Bonkers 15 came out and I found that I was 14 years old and the CD3, which what he mixed, was in collaboration with Neophyte. And Neophyte is a Dutch hardcore producer. And the whole album was just like all of this music. And I was just like, what is this sound? What's going on? Which then led me to kind of delve into the hardcore world. So I found a lot of the old Gabba, like hardcore scene back then in like 2004, five time. And I just fell in love and I've been listening to that style of music ever since then, 20 years now. When I first heard the song, I was like, hang on a second. This is like happy hardcore, like Gabba stuff. I was like, what's going on? And then when the, the bridge happened and then you saw Paul El Paul Elstack in, in, in like the bridge section and they actually had Gabba, people doing the haka. I was like, what is happening? Like, what is going on? Like doing the actual like dance to it. I would just, I would, I, 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 if I, if I had a reaction video to any song, that would have been the most impactful one. I, I fully, fully screamed at my screen. I was like, what is happening? And yes, this is on the softer sort of earlier side of hardcore. This isn't like proper, like, you, this isn't like anger fist, but this is the, uh, the softer side of everything. I am elated that the Netherlands finally, after being like the birthplace, the home of like Gabber and hardcore music, have finally sent one of these songs in this genre into Eurovision. I am so elated. I'm so excited. I'm, I think they did well doing it for this slightly more sort of nostalgic, happy, hardcore, early hardcore Gabba sound. They, I mean, they would never do well. If they said anything of modern era hardcore music, they would it would just flop. It just would. It's too divisive that people just wouldn't vote for it. I think with the song that they've sent, people who remember raving back in the 90s are going to hear this and go, oh my God, yes, bitch. Even if they weren't necessarily into like the Gabba scene, like... The Eurodance vibe of the, the the more happy hardcore side of it is very similar to like Eurodance vibe from the 90s, the rave music from the 90s, a lot of the breakbeat. There's, it has elements of it. And I think a lot of ravers who were around in that, the millennials and like the slightly older millennials, maybe some Gen Xers, will listen to that and go, oh my God. And then of course, there'll be some people like me who was absolutely in love with the harder stuff, who hear the breakdown, the bridge, who will be like, yes, bitch. I honestly think this is going to do well. I think some people think it's a bit divisive, but I, I, I actually think it's going to do well. In the booking odds, it isn't like right to the top. It's kind of like towards the upper middle. I don't know if that's going to play into it. I try not to think too much about the book, like the bookies and things, because they're not always right. But when it comes to views and stuff on the internet, it's like, I think, I think this is actually the most viewed YouTube video so far. Out of all the stuff they've released, all the songs, I think this is number one, I think. We talked about niches being represented, especially when it comes to like Bambi Thug and the slightly more sort of gothy, harder rock style of things some of the screamo stuff so to that community who loves that kind of stuff it must feel quite exciting to have something that's similar to their vibe in the show for me this is really important uh people love to see this kind of music and go it's a joke oh it's not real especially when people see like when it comes to more harder heart any kind of genre the harder you get the more criticized it becomes of like this isn't music it's a load of shit people get very opinionated when it comes to slightly more niche genres of music but there are thousands and thousands and thousands of people who enjoy this one well, i'll say millions who enjoy the style of music there's a reason why defcon which is the biggest dance music hard dance music festival in the world sells out every year. It's absolutely ginormous. I'm actually going to DEF CON this year myself. So excited. If any of you happen to be at DEF CON, come say hi. This isn't a joke. It's a serious entry. This music genre is loved by millions of people, me included. And to have this on the Eurovision stage is so exciting for people in this community. Like I can't, I can't begin to tell you how excited I am, how that the fact that this is, I am, I elated. So I'm really praying that they come to the London Eurovision party. Jury wise, I actually don't know. I'm really, I don't know how the jury is going to take this, 
because of course the juries always vote more for kind of like what will be commercially radio hits kind of around the world I guess I don't know how they'll vote for this because this is very Dutch I think some of like Europe like around the area of like the Netherlands will probably get this more I think the UK will get behind this as well we have a lot of like rave scene from the 90s who will love this but jury wise I don't know that I'm not sure about it but public vote, I think it will do very well. Will it win? Possibly, but I absolutely love it. Oh. We don't have any ideas about staging at the moment. We've only got the music video to go by. So I don't know how they're going to stage this at Eurovision. Of course, we have to have, a, we'll have a little tiny discussion about, again, I try not to go too much into like meanings of songs and things, because again, if you don't speak the language, you're not going to know the meaning as much. The commentators can give you some kind of, a, some kind of, you know, hints and things to it. But if you don't know a language, most of people around the world watching this will completely miss all of that. So I think the meaning of the song is a song for him, for his parents who died when he was young. I don't know how they died. I'm not going to speculate about that. And um, of course, uh, there's there's elements of it in the music video because of course you see at the end, the house is on fire, the picture of them are burning and he's uh, standing next to his dad in the end of the end of scene and things. And he's like talking, doing like a monologue to, to his dad. And of course it's very meaningful. Will that be lost in Eurovision? I don't know. Will they be able to convey that to people who don't speak the language? I don't know. That's going to be a difficult one, but staging, yeah, we don't know what they're going to do yet. Um, but I'm excited. I'm very excited. This makes me very excited. Just before we get on to my do's pra, just a couple of honorable mentions. Um, Ukraine sending a really, really good song this year. The reason it's not in my top 10 is, I'm not going to lie, I absolutely hate rap music. I hate rap. I've, I've never liked it. I've always been more of a dancey rave kind of person, hands up, trance, techno, all this stuff. I've never liked sort of, I've never liked rap music. So because the rap section of their song in Ukraine is, it actually fills out quite a lot of the song and it's quite an intense as well. It's not slow rap or anything. It's quite fast, like very lyric heavy. It just turns me off. So I, I love the beginning. I love the music. I love the harmonies. I love the singing. That rap section, it just turns me off. It's number 14 on all of, in, on like the list of songs this year. So like, it's not, definitely not bottom end of the scoreboard for me. And my second honorable mention is to Australia with Electric Fields. Again, this missed out on my top picks just because I really loved their Happy 2000 and Whatever song. They tried to do, what was it, like four years ago, I think? I can't remember how long, how many years ago it was. But when, when Electric Field tried to go with Happy 2000 and whatever, I loved that song. I think that was the year that the opera woman got through who was on the polls. I think that's who won that year. I still love their song they're doing this year. I just, it just, to me, it's just not good enough to be in my top 10. So coming in at my number one, my do's pra, might not be too much of a shock now when you've seen my other ones on the list, but it is Austria and We Will Rave. I've said this many times. As a Eurodance hands up trance music lover this just ticks every f***ing box for me like it's just my perfection i heard the snippet that got released that leaked on twitter and instantly i was like when this gets released i know this is going to be my number one when euro papa came out that went straight to number one and i was like i know i love you but she's gonna release we will rave and that's gonna i you'll you'll be my number one for a while but as soon as that gets released i know that it'll get, it'll get replaced i just love i love Eurodance and i love that cheesy like as one of the reasons why i really like melody festival and a lot of the stuff that sweden sends is because i really love that sort of like keys that cheesy um like schlager camp uh slight euro dancey style music that they have a lot of time in their song like festival um especially a lot of the sort of like older stuff like san and nelson i'm in love i love that jenny silver something in your eyes like there's so many of these kind of like older like campy schlager songs from back in the day that i absolutely love and we will rave is definitely more euro dance vibe but it has some of that sort of schlagery feel to it there's a trance element there's a hands up element there's there's so many different sort of blends of like 90s and 
early 2000s genres all coming into one. There's like the acid house sound to it. There's a, a, a there's just so many different samples and sounds in this that blend lots of different genres of, genres of music that I absolutely love. That there was no way that this was not going to be my number one. I was apprehensive a little bit when I first heard it about how this will perform live because a lot of this heavily synthesized music doesn't n normally translate to like a live vocal very well because of course you can't have tuning and like vocoding all that kind of stuff when it comes to Eurovision music but I think with enough backing and enough because you can pre-record backing vocals now I think enough layering and things you'll st you could still probably get the vibe and also the fact that Colleen who is doing this song is a dancer she's a trained dance professional dancer she can dance so well so we know that we're going to get good choreography in the show she can sing really well too she can sing and dance so I don't we're not gonna get this like really out of breath vocal because she's trying to do too much I, I honestly think this is gonna be a one to watch whether it will win I don't think so unfortunately because there is so many high tempo songs in this year a lot of the songs like this which which I love having so many of these songs but it does mean that the chance of one of my songs that I really like winning is probably slightly lower because there are so many that they're all gonna kind of be fighting for the same people to vote for them so well that i don't know how it's going to do but i do think we're, we, we are looking at least maybe top five potentially it's just hard to make a solid opinion when we don't know a live version yet people keep comparing this to when they did halo a few years ago absolutely do not compare this this is a package of nostalgia merged together for a modern audience that sounds well put together. The singer is great. Halo, although I liked the slightly hands up -y vibes and the slightly harder dance vibes of the song, she sounded awful live. She sounded terrible. The staging was boring. She didn't move. She was stuck in that little halo and just had like a DJ behind her. Like it was just a bit weird. It didn't really, I like it. It was actually one of my favorites of the year, like the studio version. I love it. And it had the hand, like the slightly more poppy hands up vibe. If people don't know hands up music as a style of music, like hands up is not just me saying, oh, it's hands up. Like it's, it's actually a genre of music, hands up music. It had like a hands up vibe to it. But live, it just didn't translate. She couldn't sing very well live, she sounded awful. The staging was boring and there was no presence. It was just kind of, they were just there. But also the difference between this and Halo is Halo was hard dance music at the time that was what it sounded like a few years ago that was what a lot of dance music sounds like this is a retro sounding song that's been brought into nowadays it's a very different it's a different feel and it's a different vibe that was just that was just what the kind of dance music scene sounded like at the time this is hark like harkening back to a, an element of nostalgia which is really big at the moment which that didn't that was kind of just what the scene sounded like this is a th like a completely different vibe. I don't have really loads to say about this because we don't really know that much. We've, all we've got is a music video. So if she brings some of the music video elements to the, the performance, wonderful. But yes, so that has been my top 10 picks for Eurovision 2024 this year. Um, if you are still watching the video now, comment down below, spaghetti and meatballs. So I know you're still here towards the end, but yeah, let me know what you think. Of course, you're welcome to disagree on any of my songs. This is just my opinion. Doesn't mean I don't like you because you have a different thing. Remember, your music taste doesn't mean you as a person are under attack because someone doesn't like something that you've picked. I know I cater towards more of a dance genre. So all of my picks are of course going to be a little bit more up-tempo dancey. I've not got any of the hard hitters. Like people seem to be raising, raving a lot of this year about like France and Belgium and Norway. It's just not my taste. I don't like them. It's just not for me, but you know, that's fine. We can have different tastes. It's fine. <laughs> don't get too defensive. But anyway, yeah. Thanks for watching today. This I don't know how long this video is going to be, uh, but I really enjoyed making it. Next year for Eurovision, though, I will be doing a reaction to the actual songs coming out. I'm going to make sure that I make an effort to do it because, of course, again, the only reason I didn't do it this year is because I have a live event coming up very, very soon in, like, three weeks. <laughs> oh, God! So... It's just been taking up so much of my time and it just happened to clash with Eurovision season. So, uh, yeah. So next year, we'll be actually being doing a little bit more reactions to actual songs coming out. But yes, anyway, thanks for watching. Please hit the like button. Let me know your opinions down below. Remember to be nice and kind to everyone. Make sure you do come follow me on all of my social medias, Twitter, Instagram, 
TikTok, all that stuff is linked down below. Come follow me, come send me things, come give me things to react to. Of course, I do have a Patreon where you can support me over there if you'd like to help me keep afloat, girls, and uh, you get some shout outs, some outtake videos, all that fun stuff. So thank you to my lovely Patreons whose names you can see on the side of the, the screen here. And an extra special shout out to my top tier Patreons, Kelly Rose, Nova, Rye Loves Rory, Cameron Pittman, Rishi, Athena Barrington, Erin Grace, Christina Kyle, Benjamin Baker, I uh, Robin Scott Palmer, Bethard, Steph Utech, Caitlin Wright, Chloe Louise, Shell Herman, and Kelly Bowser. Thank you for being my top tier patrons. You guys are mwah, delicious. But anyway.